Right, we continue at this mammoth week of driver testing. It's more head-to-head -head stuff and the TS3 remains in my hand. And in the other hand, I've got another big boy and it's from Callaway and it is the Rogue. Now then, in terms of loft again, we've set these up exactly the same. So this is a 10.5 head with one degree taken off and that matches straight up to this nine and a half degrees. You know that I've got the 10 side blue, 55 uh, stiff shaft in the TS3. That's not available in the Rogue, but we've gone to something as similar as possible it's the synergy shaft and i'm going to read uh well she's from aldida uh it's 60 gram stiff very very similar indeed in terms of what you'd put them up in terms of a head-to-head -head. question is who's going to come out on top move camera hit some golf balls and let's discuss who is the winner out of the ts3 and the callaway rogue Okay, so these videos are coming at you thick and fast uh, this week in terms of head-to-head -head videos on these big boys on the drivers. Like I said, I'm into the Callaway Rogue. Um, just talk briefly again, like I have on the other videos. If you want my opinion on this sort of broken down specifically about the Rogue driver, then please go back and see that review in the back catalogue. What I will say is one thing I noticed from the driver, again, Rogue concentrated very much on dispersion and it performed very well in that aspect with good ball speeds it became for me it moved the epic on a little bit um, in terms of dispersion in terms of overall distance it maintained some good ball speeds across the face dispersion was very very good indeed and that's pretty much what we've seen with all the drivers improved dispersion without a loss in ball speeds this year um, like I said, I'm not gonna do an individual review, but I'll talk about the looks of these things. Um, and again, very much from a personal opinion. And then when I hit a few balls now, I'm gonna talk about the sound and feel. For me, again, I really like the look of the, um, of the Callaway Rogue driver. I forgot the name of it for a minute there. Um, I love this kind of, uh, th this pattern that fades off on, on, in their head. It's slightly elongated compared to the TS3, but again, it's that, high gloss finish this sort of carbon looking crown if you like this imprint i really like the look of it classy looking club once again like i said shafts very very similar indeed from the eye nothing to split these two to be quite honest with you i'm a fan like i said of this uh, of this callaway look i don't know very difficult to split and i wouldn't be swayed either way based on looks but what i will say is uh i will be swayed on performance so shut up and let it some golf balls and let's talk i'll put this down and then I'm going to hit a couple of balls on camera and I just want to give you my feedback in terms of how this club feels and sounds. I think the, the, the talk about on the eye is very much to the individual. Like I said, this is slightly elongated uh, shape to the, to the rogue. Um, and I like, and again, it seems slightly more offset, I would say, at address. They're two things very visible uh, when you put these two behind the ball. And the first thing, I'm going to hit another ball before I make comment to it, but I seem to remember it from the initial testing. It's very much a, a more muted sound. It's an absolute flyer, that second ball, far better than the first. But the sound was the same on pretty much both of them. It, like I said, it's a more muted sound, it's a duller sound. Um, I've just come off the back of the G400 Max uh, review, uh, head to head, and again, that is a, a, a again, it's it's a louder, uh, a louder bang, but nothing too sort of gunshotty, and this becomes, like I said, far more muted, very difficult to explain. Do I like the feel? I don't know, maybe, may, maybe not as much as I do the TS3 and others. Um, like I said, they've really softened it down, but dampened it down, and all it doesn't do, it doesn't give you that Oddly enough, it doesn't sound like that explosion of club head, uh, of ball speed off the face, I don't know. Um, but certainly goes out there, there's no doubt about that. Anyway, very much like I said, personal preference on what I'm hearing. Uh, I will hit some more golf balls and uh, I will get again 10 shots. Let's get them. The dry ball data, we're on GC2, we're on TaylorMade TP5 golf balls. There's no differences for these head-to-heads. Sit back down and uh, discuss the numbers. 
Right, so I'm not going to be moving far from this spot uh, for quite a few hours as I go through all of this data from uh, yesterday and the previous day's testing. It ended up going over into two days and uh, I've got lots of data to go through. Lots of the top drivers are tested and this is the second video that I'm going to post. So this is the, obviously we're into the numbers now of the Rogue versus the TS3. Um, I'm using it, it's going to be a bit of a video, if you watch every video this week then the TS3 numbers that I've, um, that I've produced are going to be exactly the same numbers that we use for every one of these videos because they were obviously it's not worth me hitting the driver every single time. These were produced on the same or the following day of each other. Uh, GC2 is the data once again collected. Uh, I'm going to stop waffling and we're going to go straight into the numbers for the Rogue. So let's throw that data up on screen now. Uh, really interesting one for me, the Rogue. I think from the initial review, I wasn't overly keen on it. I kind of, I don't know. It was a bit hit and miss for me in terms of overall performance. It didn't really do anything that really, for me, uh, ticked the box, I'm afraid. But anyway into the ball speed, 143 on average, it's quite low. The 138, a couple of 141s dropped off quite a bit. It's launching way too high at 17.8. And again, maybe that's something that the Rogue wants to achieve. Maybe it wants to help people in launching the ball higher. They got that CG well and truly well back into the head. Um, but for me, on the setting that it was in terms of uh, a 9.5 head with this shaft launching 17.8 way too high incredibly the spin was uh, a decent number 2381 but you can see that peak height at 41 this thing was going into orbit um, and carrying overall 243 and once again i think just on that 243 while we're on that end column there we've got to consider the fact there was a 230 ball in there which has dropped off that average quite a bit and if we talk about yesterday's numbers which was the m3 you take out the 230 ball and it's probably in terms of overall yardage carry very very similar to that m3 but for me uh, i'm just going to throw up the dispersion numbers and once again, similar that I've seen from all drivers tested them, if I'm being honest with you, let's make no mistake, the person on the end of the club and the swing they put on it is gonna dictate where this ball ends up. Yes, there's, they are more forgiving. Yes, I think there is a bit of help in that club face in terms of ball speeds off of uh, the whole club face. But where that ball ends up is largely down to the variety which of, of, of swing patterns that I will put on it and that's why I review these things from the base of the average golfer. Anyway, once again it's a similar pattern to the M3 that I hit yesterday and one you'll see quite a bit from me. The sort of what is that three, seven shots right of target, relatively okay with that. I think if we look at their right of centre of target and there may be some of them wider ones are grabbing the first cut, I don't know, but they're not miles away, I'd take those. And once again, the balls that three, uh, which again, I keep saying about the M3, I did exactly the same yesterday. I'll always throw in that uh, sort of hooky shot of mine, which I'm trying to stop doing. Uh, and I've managed to do it on sort of seven out of the 10, but those hooky shots down that right hand side, which tend to be the low spinning, higher, uh, they'll be the longest distance as well, but I'm trying to stop them. So they're kind of, I, I think in terms of dispersion, I'm okay with what's happened with the Rogue. I think it's fairly good in terms of performance there. And like I said, the blame in terms of where those balls have ended up is clearly on my head and not the Callaway Rogue. Anyway, I'm gonna throw up these TS3 numbers. And like I said, um, well, I'll throw up the full chart because if this is the only video of the series that you've watched, then obviously we'll have to start from scratch. But for those of you who've seen this in yesterday's video, I do apologize, but I'll go through them fairly quickly. So, uh, and if you want to stop and pause this bit and analyze this data a little bit uh, longer for yourselves who didn't watch yesterday's video, then by all means do so. So with the TS3, 146 ball speed, 14.8 launch, so a much better launch angle for me. Spinning arguably just a little bit too low at 1.8 and the peak height may be affected. I could do with just getting that up a little bit. However, the whole thing's combined between launch, spin, um, and the ball speed, 256 carry. I said in yesterday's video, by far the most consistent numbers in terms of yardage carry that I've ever hit on a video with any club uh, since I've been doing this testing. Uh, and once again, I'll go through the, if I can find it, the dispersion numbers, I'll throw them up again on screen for you now. Almost identical to what I've just said, 
the shots that I'm hitting down right of target is what I'm trying to do more of and that's more about my swing once again those hooky ones from right to left I'm trying to get rid of and then hopefully at some point you might see some balls going down the middle but at the moment it's a bit of a struggle but like I said I'm an average golfer and that's exactly what I would expect from me on a Saturday afternoon as well but anyway once again the assessment between the two clubs is simple I'm not a massive fan of the Rogue. Uh, some people may say that uh, you know I've gone into it with a negative attitude then and a, a bias maybe. Okay, I'll take that on board, but I can only tell you the way it is. I, I hit it on a number of occasions. I don't particularly like the sound and feel from the Rogue, and I don't think it does anything particularly for me in terms of overall performance. Again, it's not a driver I would sort of buy or move to, whereas I think numbers with the TS3, once again, have pretty much blown it out of the water for me, not necessarily for everybody, but in this, uh, it was a visible difference in terms of overall, the way this club performed, the TS3 would have won this all day long for me. So there you go. The winner of the head-to-head -head between Rogue and TS3 is by far for me, the TS3 on, on every ticket for me, looks, feel, performance, it wins hands down. Anyway, that is only my review, only my perspective. Love it if you've, as ever, if you've tried the TS3, if you've tried the Rogue, stick your comments down below. Disagree with me, agree with me, throw some opinions in. I'll try and get back in the comments if I can. I'm gonna carry on doing more of this. Like I said, it may be a bit repetitive, but I'm determined to go through every major driver that's been released in 2018. And uh, I'll be moving on uh, tomorrow to a big one for me personally, because it's the TS3 versus the G400 Max, which is the club that is currently in my bag. And I'm a little bit worried. Anyway, thumbs up, thumbs down, comment down below. Subscribe if you don't already. See you soon.